the love chapter. Here's here's Hasim and uh, take it away, Hasim. I'll, I'll be here to uh, I'll be here to prompt you in case you miss a word or something. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to get the care group. We didn't. It wasn't like drilling and you know sheer memorization. We just talked about how it's affecting us memorizing an entire chapter of the Bible. It, it starts to really affect the way you deal with your day-to-day -day life. Is this true? Okay, go ahead. Hello, church family. A little bit nervous, you know, to do this in front, but I think I'll be all right. Got a grace to God. Amen. I'm recording uh, Romans 12. The beginning of I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith, or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's in the parking lot together in a month or so. Um, you know, that was powerful. Um, when, and also, when Pastor Guy was talking about the, uh, the tithes, I uh, recently volunteered at uh, Joel Osteen. Uh, he had a little, a little thing over there in Marlins Park recently. 40,000 people hearing the, hearing the gospel. And uh, Pastor Clip, by the way, got up on that stage and told 40,000 people. And just, we were, I was sitting by as far away as Mary and Lisa, and the people telling about, yeah, this is a great book, this is a great book. 
But I was, I was working with this young man from uh, Lakewood Church in Texas. And his name's Caleb. He was in his mid-20s, and he was telling me how, how great Joel Osteen is. He's been over to his house. And I was like, into his house? Is it really a big, <laughs> it's a big $10.6 million mansion. And we're talking, uh, you know, it was like 30,000 people come every Sunday to church. I'm like, how does it, I mean, do you guys know each other? Are there, are there different people there? Like, and I asked him, what about tithes and offerings? We were there for hours. We got there early afternoon. We were there all day. And I said, how do you guys collect tithes and offerings in that, in that stadium? And he's like, you know what? Tithes and offerings is the best time at our church. He goes, you don't see this on television, but um, Joel has a really, <laughs> Joel. Pastor Joel, <laughs> Joel was doing, has this great way of making people feel like he says, uh, you know, give whatever you want. God loves a cheerful giver. I mean, why, why, not, why not try to emulate someone like Joel Osteen? Oh, um, what, what else? So, um, as you can see, I'm, so Pastor Cliff mentioned that I had given my testimony at the, at the um, sunrise. I'm going to try to move around. Um, you're looking at a caterpillar who's inside of a cocoon. Pastor Cliff said, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been coming to this church for about two and a half years. Um, I, I, two and a half years ago, I didn't have a driver's license. I have one now, thank you, Jesus. I, uh, I wasn't married to, to my wonderful wife, Catherine, who I, who I love very much. I, want, I, <laughs> I, I said, I said is, it right if, is it all right if I bring you up on the pulpit tonight? Said, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, two and a half, I'd ride my bike here, and I'd be wearing shorts, and I'd be all sweaty, and, I, and, and everyone was very welcoming to me. And, and, and as I got to know Pastor Clef and, and other people at this church, I, and I started reading the Bible, and I realized that Jesus is, there's a discipline, there's, there's, there's an all-inclusive package. You have, you have to start reading, reading this book every day. You have to start praying every day. You have to start talking, you have to get to know the Lord. You've got to get to know Him. You've got to start coming to church. As, as like this time with my, my disciple, Christopher, Christopher, by chance, I tutor him, Robert Morgan, he told me some of his problems in his life. I said, you've got to come, you've got to, come to church. And he told me where he lives. He lives walking distance. He's here almost as often as he can come. He comes, he comes to like three care groups. He comes to, and it, it's, the more you want Jesus, the, the more he, he'll give you. I, when I say almost every day, I say, God, I want more of you. When you, feel, when you feel the love that he has, when you feel his love, it, it, it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether or not someone's going to argue with you about, can you prove to me that I'm not heaven and hell? Do you really believe that? Do you really have, you know, it doesn't matter when you, when you experience his love, and then you start receiving spiritual gifts, and we're going to, I'm going to talk about that in a second, because that's, it's incredible, but where was I? So anyway, I'm, I'm like, you, you are watching a caterpillar, I'm, I'm still in the cocoon right now, it's a transparent cocoon, I'm, I'm transforming right now, there's a, I know, I know that there's, a, as Hasim did such a great job, I'm so proud of you, Hasim. I really, I, and, uh, we all get, as you can see, I'm a little nervous myself right now. I'll, I'll, as I said, I'm transparent. I'm a caterpillar in a cocoon right now. But as in Romans 12, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I'm, I'm, my mind is renewing every day. I'm, I'm, I'm happily married. I'm, I'm getting used to this. Pastor Phil texting me on Wednesday, asking me to preach on Friday. I said, yes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> um, so I know that soon that the cocoon's about to burst in this Butterflies are going to fly away. And it's, it's, uh, I don't know where, but we'll, and that's all in God's hands. So um, last time I gave my testimony, and I, I'm, I'm going to try to really minimize my testimony because I really want to talk about Jesus. I really want to talk about the Word of God. I really want to talk about the transformation and the spiritual gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, But when I gave this, this testimony at the Easter sunrise service, I talked about the Muscovy Ducks. Who, who remembers the Muscovy Ducks? Pastor Clep sure does. He texts me every once in a while. Carol's heard the Muscovy Ducks story at least two times. <laughs> and people don't, I, I was quoting Romans 12, Jeremiah said this, Joshua said this, but people seem to only remember the Muscovy Ducks. So I, I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to develop, a, a, as, I, as I work towards becoming a, a, an ordained pastor over the next few years. Um, <laughs> Um, God's been telling me I'm going to be a pastor, but I, I, for years I said, I'm not going to be a pastor. Are you serious? Not me. Are you kidding? I'm not a pastor. I'm an artist. 
<laughs> so, uh, oh my goodness. What was I talking about? Oh, uh, the Muscovy Duck. So I don't want to talk about the Muscovy Duck. If you heard the Muscovy Duck story, you realize why I don't want to talk about it. So anyway, this. So, so I wanted to sort of be like it's a decontinued sort of thing. You know, like last time was the Muscovy Ducks. My care group they heard the next story, which was the coffee flavored ketchup. Which, which happened when I was in Burger King that morning with a, a crackhead and we discussed a million dollar idea we had, coffee flavored ketchup. But, <laughs> but that's it, but I just, I'm just gonna keep it short, like I said. Uh, during that time period, I was, I was uh, intoxicated most of the time and my life was in a, the pastor club has dubbed me a professional sinner at that time. That was a professional sinner. And um, so I wound up in the design district at, the, at these art galleries, they give out free wine and cheese once a month, and they invite you. And I'm, I'm totally like, my brain is twisted. I've been smoking weed and I'm drinking. And I'm, I'm gonna walk around and get these twists. I'm walking up down the street, and I'm drunk and I'm by myself, and I, and I see this, this set of keys on the ground. Bridget, <laughs> I pick up the set of keys and I, I'm looking at this, and I'm stone, and it's, a, it's got a little Mercedes Benz uh, thing on it. Right, like, little button. I press the button, I hear a beat. Off in the distance, I went to vision, so I went, hmm, you're seeing I hear it, and I started following it, following it, and it, after a while, I found this Mercedes, and it was in the parking lot of this art museum. It was like a brand new, dark green Mercedes with tinted windows. And what did Jason do? Jason went, that's exactly what I did, Richard. I went for a joyride in that Mercedes, and I was drunk, and I started that engine, and I started driving around, and, um, <laughs> So I, I, maybe I just leave it. Maybe I should be continued right there. So, <laughs> so now, so we're, we're just gonna we're just gonna end it right there because I'm, I'm having some flashbacks and all. Well, but but I the reason I'm, I'm the reason I'm sharing my my uh, remember I'm a caterpillar in a, in a cocoon right now. God is transforming me. He's, he's given me a new life. And I see I see the old Jason and I said I don't even know who that is or was. I don't even know that person. I don't even like that old Jason. So. But that was a fun Mercedes Dura that night. Luckily, but God, I mean, God has definitely been with me this whole time. He's been with me throughout my, I mean, he's, if, if he wasn't with me, then the devil would have me, I'd be, I'd be burning in the lake of fire right now. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> um, so, uh, wow. Praise, praise the Lord. I, I just, um, whew. There's, a, the Holy Spirit has as I transform, the Holy Spirit has begun to, uh, the more that I prepared for this sermon over the last couple of days, the Holy Spirit has changed, just, just prepare for me, because it, that outline is not going to, it looks like Chinese right now, but the Holy Spirit is really taking me into a different, a different realm. I, I, I look, is your name Tanya? Last, was you were on Sunday, and, then, and we're going to talk about this, I'm gonna, I wanted to discuss John 14, 12 tonight, which says, Jesus says, if you believe in me, the works that I do, you will do also. Even greater works than these you will do. Because I go to my Father. That, that verse, and I've, I've also, I've memorized John 15, which is, which is the next chapter. It's almost like a, like a footnote to John 14, 12. I tell it, you abide in him, he abides in you. You, you. you pretty much give up your whole life for him. And you don't really want anything else. He says, if you, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Yeah. By this, my Father is glorified. So now, what do I desire? Do I want a new Mercedes? Do I, do I want a Rolex? That would be nice, but but I'm, I want more Jesus. I want, I, want, I want to know Him more. I want more of His blessing than His gifts. And I just want to know Him more. I, want to, I just want to know Him because my life has, has been so drastically transformed over the last couple of years since I've been coming, in this, <laughs> coming up a room. Since I've met Jesus and I've met God led me to this church. So anyway, Tanya, this, remember John 14, 12, even greater works than these. Now, I'm nowhere near as any, you know, I'm nowhere near walking on water or, you know, making the winds and the waters still like Jesus did or going up to a sick, a, sick, a dead girl and saying, Talitha Kumai, she stands up, or a deaf man and saying, Ephaha. This, this is Mark, Mark 6 and 7. He uses these words. He goes, Ephaha. And the man can hear and, and I'm not anywhere near that, but, but I, I went to pray for Tanya. And as 
as soon as I, she introduced herself, and as soon as, and God showed me something about, about Tanya. And I said, it was a song, I said, I see you, I see you singing a new, uh, playing music or a song or something. And she said, oh, that's what I do, I'm writing, I write songs. And I said, I see you very joyous about this song. I almost see you dancing and, and singing this song. And she said, yeah, I, I want to share this song that, and I want to share this song with people. So I invite her to, to the care group. And, and hopefully you'll, you'll come by, Tanya. But, but things like this keep happening to me. And, and I just, <laughs> and as I, Rudy, great job drumming tonight. Thank I love Rudy. Rudy. Thank you. Rudy's also helped. You have no idea, Rudy and I, when I first started coming here, we went to Taco Bell one night. It was about midnight. And we started preaching the gospel to the employees at Taco Bell at midnight. And they're like, we're closing. We've got to get out of here. But um, I'm going to be easily distracted. I feel very comfortable standing here talking, talking to you. Um, it, stuff like that keeps happening because I, as, I, as I look around, um, I, just, I just feel so blessed that God has taken me here. God has, God has led me. I mean, I was driving here tonight with Catherine and I said, I, I feel so excited and so enthusiastic about, about standing on the pulpit and, and you know, sharing the gospel. I wonder how LeBron James feels when he's like, feels when he's like on his way to the game. He must feel so excited. You know, we don't realize that. You know, we don't. You know, we just, we just don't realize that. Like, I'm just. I'm going to try to keep it together. I'm going to go look at my outline in a second. But there's something I, I just want to share. And, and my wife Catherine has has. Uh, she, she told me to be careful about this to, to share this kind of stuff. But um, where's where's Patricia? She went you. Anyway, her, her, um, I saw her daughter Michaela. Her daughter Michaela, a few weeks ago, I think it was maybe two or three weeks ago. But um, something happened. She, Pastor Phil said, I want you to pray for this woman. She, she, you know, and I started praying for her, and I started to feel this. Sometimes it's like the Holy Spirit is electricity. It's like love, electricity. It was like coming. I just felt something, and I put my hand on her shoulder, and I put my hand on her hand, and she just fell, she fell down. And I, I never, that never happened to me before. And I, I like started sweating profusely, and I, I was just like, I, I just kept praying for her. And, and I heard, I heard Pastor Bill go, "Who <laughs> up?" He witnessed it, and and then it started happening. It started happening more. Now I go back to John fourteen twelve. But, the work, if you believe in me, the works that I do, you will do also even greater works than these will do. So that's why I say I'm a captain. I'm still at the very early stages of, of this of the Christian life because how 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 would, how, would, how would somebody not want to be a believer in Jesus? If, if I see God, we'll go back to Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God that you may prove? So now, when you memorize Romans 12, you, you go over it. You work. In the character, we're not trying to memorize it. We're just going over it. We're just going over it. We have a special way to go over it. We go over it every day. We go over it. And before you know it, it, it stays. It stays in your mind. It stays in your heart. And it, it's, it, it's, it's like, it's like I compare it to like going hunting with friends and you have your guns with no bullets. If you memorize Romans 12, you got it. You got bullets in the gun. You have ammunition. And like Hussein was saying, you know, you know, my supervisor, my job, he, he could be the biggest jerk, and I'll just it'll pop up my head. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. I'm so sorry. I, I, I won't do that again. I, you know, and I'm always apologizing, but, but I can't. I can't be any other way because because Jesus, because Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Place, I'm doing a good job. If not, I gotta watch her. You gotta watch your wife. She's the gauge of everything. <laughs> and she and she picked out this outfit this evening. <laughs> so so I was praying about this. I was praying about I'm, I'm talking about the gifts, the, the spiritual the spiritual gifts. And I was praying about it today, and I'm praying about it right now. And and I'm gonna do something that, that's gonna that's gonna that I've never done. And I, I did it a little bit at the Easter sermon, but I'll do it a little more now. It's, it's gonna take me somewhere, and and I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, I've, I've been speaking in tongues a lot because Paul said I spoke I speak in tongues more than all of you. And, and, and if Paul said it, Paul served as a great example of someone who really, really, really loved the Lord so much that he, you know, he wrote 
so much of this of this word of God. He was so inspired by the Holy Spirit, and it's you know you want to you want to you can't be like Jesus if you're trying to be like Paul. You know, so you want to speak in tongues a lot. So so I go I go and I um, Catherine works at night. And she goes to sleep. She takes a nap before she goes to work. I go for a walk so she'll have quiet. And I walk and I speak in tongues. And sometimes I, I bump into people from this church while I'm walking. And some people think I'm probably a drug addict or something as I walk around speaking in tongues. Um, I saw George once, King George. I was walking around and I was going, Ooh, doo, doo, shoo, bada, 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 bada. And I look at and I see George and, and Marie in the car. His mother lived in that neighborhood. Oh, hallelujah. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to speak in tongues. I'm going to pray. I'm, I'm going to pray that, that, that the Holy Spirit is going to fill this, this, his house. This, this is the house of the Lord. Oh, I'm just, I'm just trying to, if there's anyone here who does it, who's never tried it, who's waiting, I ask. A lot of people say, I've been, you know, they, I've been walking with the Lord for 10 years, 20 years, and I've never spoken in tongues. I've never, I've never, it, it, it's, it's something you, just, you have to do it. You have to, you have to show the Holy Spirit that, you know, you're ready, to, you're ready to get to know Him like that. You know, you're ready to speak His language. He understands English and Spanish and Chinese and Russian and everything else, but when you speak in tongues, that's He's talking right to you, right to you. And I, I, I just, I mean, things have happened. Last, last night, I, I left my Bible in the car and I went out together around 11:30 at night. And the neighbor comes out. And he's like, he, needs, he needs a ride somewhere. He needs a ride to the bar. And I love it about almost midnight. And I said, let me go ask my wife. She goes, yeah, go ahead and take some music. So we're driving, I'm, I'm preaching to him. And I'm telling him about my DUI and my, my old wife. And, and he's like, wow, you know, I, I, watch, I watch this movie, The Bible. He's got that movie on his phone. And pulled up to that bar and he sat and we talked. And he went into the bar and he texted me this morning. He wasn't able to make it tonight because I invited him. Um, First Corinthians 13 is such a great example. It's a great explanation of speaking in tongues. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Who hasn't experienced Jesus Christ in your life? Who hasn't experienced being born again and experienced repenting of their sins and Accepting Jesus Christ into their heart. Father God, I pray that that, that, that person will, will open their heart tonight, Father God. That person will, will come up to me after this, this sermon and introduce themselves and, and receive, receive prayer, Father God. Receive Christ into their hearts. Because they're not here by accident, Father God. No, no one is here tonight by accident. Father God, I ask you to fill my lungs with the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father God, I ask you to use my, my vocal cords. To, to share the word to, to, to my best ability. Father God, I ask that you just, just cover us in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So I want to talk about John 14, 12. I, got, I went off on a little tangent there. Um, but I, it's hard. I'm, I'm getting a... Thank you all. She, she's, a, she's one of the ages. My wife says the, the main age. Pastor Clef is a gauge. All the days is a gauge. When care group is over, I see what happens her. at 9-11. She comes at 9-11. She gives us that look and it's coming down. <laughs> we love all of that. Without her, who knows where, where we'd be right now. <laughs> so, so I want to... I, um... It's okay, cell phones go off. Nothing we can do. So I, I want I to talk about... Um, if there's someone in here who hasn't accepted Christ into their life, I, I want to talk about this, this, this book that I've been reading every, every morning. Um, and the best way to explain this book, the Word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the depth of soul and spirit. Now, when you realize that this, this is a it's a sword. It's, it's piercing, piercing the division. I'm sorry, I piercing the division of soul and spirit. And when you when you feel it, when you're reading it, and you and, it's, and it just it doesn't make sense how how this book, which is like four thousand years old or something, how how this book is so relevant and how it's gonna and how it's how it's gonna still be here forever after the heavens heavens and the earth are gone. This word is still gonna be here. This, 
it's so powerful. When you, there's no way I can explain how it feels when it's piercing the division between my soul and my spirit, but it's, it's, uh, it's real. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's unbelievable. Bridget, I see you yawning. That, that brings my, my gauge down a notch. <laughs> and I, I, told, I understand. So, um, but God's word is not, it's, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'll admit, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty well-read person. I, I spent my life reading a lot of books, classics, literature, all that kind of stuff. But I realized recently with this book, it's very different than fiction and literature because in, in fiction and literature, in the classics, John Steinbeck, Hemingway, uh, Don, Crime and Punishment, War and Peace, whatever you might be reading, it's, it's uh, there's, a, there's a, a distance between there's a differentiation between the, the characters in the book and the experience in the book and what's going on in the book. It's entertaining us. It's entertainment. And, there, and there's the differentiation between the reader and the book. But with, but with the Word of God, there, there's, no, there's, there's, no, there's, there's no difference. It's, talk, it's talking right to us. It's talking right to us personally. I mean, it's talking right to me in, in so many ways. I mean, it's even said my name a couple times. You made it. <laughs> you know. So, back to... Um, Back to John 14, 12. Um, what I'm going to do is, I think I have about four, four or five minutes left. John 14, 12 again. Jesus says, and I'm repeating this for a reason, because you have to listen to this. Jesus says, if you believe in me, the work that I do, you will do also. Even greater works than these, he will do. Because I go to my Father. Now, he's, not, he's talking to his disciples, of course. He's talking to whoever would listen to him. But he's also talking to whoever's reading, reading the word and whoever's going to believe in him. And believing in him isn't just saying, okay, Jesus, I believe in you. Then how do I go and you know, heal the sick and raise the dead? It doesn't just happen like that. There's no shortcut. It takes, Jesus has to see that you've made, you've made a, a commitment, that you're ready to change. And when I dropped that man at the bar off, when I dropped him off at the bar last night at midnight, and he said, come on in, I'll give you a drink. But I don't go out. <laughs> Jesus has told me, he said, Jason, if, if, if a can of beer even comes near your lips, I'm going to leave. <laughs> He's told me that, and I and I said that's that's fear that's fear of the Lord. That's, that's my that's my. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Pa Pastor Tuff, I'm sorry, I, I, I've got to do this, Pastor. Tuff, I, I I love this man. This is such a great senior pastor. And I just I, I pray for him all the time. I just, I just want to say that when you, when you find you find a church, you're here tonight. You're, you're, you found the right, in my opinion, it's the best church in the planet. And my wife is the best wife on the planet. <laughs> but when when you come to a church, God leads you to a church, it, it's the right church for you. You feel comfortable there. All the things you're going to learn, all the way that you're going to grow, there, there's, a, there's a reason for it. And, 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 I, I, um, and it's good to see Tanya. It's good to see Xavier here tonight. Xavier, <laughs> Xavier knew I was going to point him out. I, he hasn't been here for, for a while. He called me today and he said, I told him I was giving a sermon. He said, I'm going to come and support you. Now, I'm, I'm so grateful to that. I'm just grateful he's here. How am I doing, Xavier? I, but, I'm, I'm, it's very important. Feedback is very important. One of the classes I took, biblical preaching, feedback is very important. Feedback, eye contact, gestures, what you wear. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, and like, like Pastor Gal had said, I'm a... Um, as I'm transforming, I'm, as I transform in this in this cocoon, uh, I'm very excited because you know I, I feel the, the I feel the, the butterfly wings coming out a little bit, you know, and when I when I pray for people, and, uh, so I I know I know that there's I, I know there's a, a person in here tonight who, who needs healing, who needs healing, and and, and, if, and if Jesus says if you believe in me, you can do these works, even greater works, then I I believe. 